when we have emotions, thoughts, or feelings, emotions of anger, resentment from something that happened in the past, upset that we see on social media, frustrations in the world, where should we be redirecting these thoughts, feelings, and emotions? You must punch a window pane or a wall better. A stone wall is good. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel it more, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because uh, that is the model that the Hollywood and the television shows, everything mm -hmm. is setting up. When you get angry, you break something, all right? <laughs> exactly. So, see, first of all, people are assuming that anger is happening to them mm -hmm. or misery is happening to them. No, this is exactly what I said earlier, maybe I didn't articulate it fully. No, you are creating anger, you are creating misery, you are creating joy, you are creating whatever. All this is happening from within you. Is it true all human experience is happening from within us? Uh, it's… it's… yeah, because we perceive something and then we… No, no. And something else… something else may stimulate. But human experience is happening from within us, isn't it? Right. Whether it's love or hate or anger or misery or joy or anything is only happening from within us. Right. The simple question I am asking is, what happens from within you? Should you have… should it happen your way or somebody else's way? It should happen your way. Of course, because the world will never happen your way hundred percent. Because there are so many stakeholders in the world, little bit will happen my way, little bit your way, that is fine. But what happens within me must happen my way. If what happens within me does not happen my way, this is the worst form of slavery, isn't it? Wow. Somebody decides what happens within me, somebody decides where I should sit. This is slavery, everybody understands this. Mm. Now somebody decides whether I am happy or unhappy, isn't this the worst form of slavery? Yeah. So this is the liberation that humanity needs to work at. This is what inner engineering means. Inner engineering is not some uh, mechanical process, because engineering means this essentially. You will say something is well engineered, only if it works the way you want, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If this one doesn't work the way you want, what the hell are you expecting other things to work the way you want? It's just an accident. When you live accidentally, anxiety is normal. Yes, yeah, it's, it's every day. <laughs> but when you're living on purpose and intentionally and mindfully, you should be able to shift out of that. No, 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 I wouldn't use those words. Okay, what I, words would I'm... you use? <laughs> Well, when you say purpose, intention, mindful. See, this is the whole problem with people, their mind is full all the time. Right. My mind is just empty all the time, nothing happening, nothing. That's why I wear a turban just to make it substantial <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing in my head. If I'm walking there, I'm just walking, nothing happens because, see, right now, your hands are there. Suppose your one hand starts jumping like this. Huh? Or if, let's say, my hand starts jumping like this, what will you think? You think Sadhguru has some kind of a <laughs> isn't it? No, I just Sir, no? that's the that's the way intelligent people do things, you know? <laughs> no, no, suppose my hand starts jumping like that, yeah. you will think there is some ailment, isn't it? That's you will just, think I am… Yeah. maybe Mr. Parkinson's is visiting me or something like that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, your mind is jumping all the… all over the place. Why is that not ailment, I'm asking? Your only comfort is other people cannot see it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I guess they see it through the manifestation of you being anxious or tense or stressed or angry or… No, whether they see it or not, they see it or not, if any part of you is simply jumping without purpose, is that an ailment, I'm asking? If any part of you is jumping without purpose, is it an ailment? Um, well, I think in your inner engineering course, you talk about how we have certain faculties that we can't control, like going to the bathroom and doing certain things that are part of our body. So, yeah, but uh, I don't know if that's a trick the, question or not. The, but, no, no, the pee, the pee is just filling up in the bladder. It's not jumping all over the place. Got you, got you. If it jumps all over the place, that is an ailment. That's an ailment. Yes, correct. <laughs> Right now, suppose, let me take a worse example. 
Yes. Suppose your hand starts beating you in the face. <laughs> That's an ailment, yes. For sure. So right now your thoughts and emotions are beating you up from inside. Why is that not an ailment, I'm saying? No, it is. So, let us not think anger happens to us, resentment happens to us. No, these things we are creating, we have the power to emote. We can make it love, we can make it joy, we can make it ecstasy, but people have chosen to make it tension, anger, resentment, hatred, they've turned it that way. Now they will claim this is because life has been unfair to me. Life has not been fair to anybody, <laughs> especially not me <laughs> Life is not fair to anybody. Life is simply rolling, it's for you to learn to ride it. Sometimes we are in uncomfortable situations, some for, sometimes we are in comfortable situations, sometimes we are in situations where we know exactly what to do, and sometimes we are in situations where we don't know what to do. Sometimes somebody else is controlling the situation, sometimes you're controlling the situation. This is how life is. If you are constantly stepping into unfamiliar situations in your life, that means you are growing at a rapid pace. If you are in constantly in comfortable situations, that means you are a stagnant life. Mm. So if you… if you look for comfort, if you look for a comfort zone, because the moment your thoughts and emotions are going to torment you with external stimulant, external stimulation that happens, what will you choose? You will choose a comfort zone. This means you will limit your life. So the moment somebody can cause you pain or suffering, this means unknowingly you will make the very scope of your life very limited. Mm. Only when a person loses this fear of suffering, that no matter what happens, this is how I will be, if this assurance comes to you, then you walk full stride because whatever happens in the life around you, it will not really make you suffer. Once you are free from suffering, only when you are free from suffering, when you are free from the fear of suffering, that is when you will explore your life in full depth and dimension. How do we rid ourselves of the fear of suffering then? See, as I told you, the suffering is happening because your faculties are not held in your hands. If I have to go to this in little detail, I will have to take a few minutes. See, for example, if I ask you a simple question, do you want your intellect to be sharp or blunt? What is Sh your choice? Sharp. Sharp, of course. So you understand, your intellect is… the b better… the sharper it is, the better it is, it's like a knife. So if it's like a knife, it's a cutting instrument. So if you give anything to your intellect, it will dissect everything and see, this is the nature of our intellect. You don't have to physically dissect, but it dissects everything and sees what is this, what is that. This is the nature of the intellect. Without dissection, it doesn't know because it is a knife, it's like a scalpel. It must be sharp. A knife that is not sharp is no good knife, isn't it? Right. So… Good for… good for butter. Yeah. <laughs> that also depends. If it just comes out of the refrigerator, even that it won't cut <laughs> So, if… Uh, if you are using a knife to do everything, to do everything, let's say you eat with a knife, you brush with your knife and you do everything with your knife, of course you will be bleeding. Mm -hmm. That's all that's happening. Only one dimension of intelligence within us, in yogic way of looking at things, we look at mind as sixteen parts. Mm. This intellect is just one part. Because our education systems are such, which are totally intellect-oriented, human beings largely are using only one dimension of their intellect to do everything. Mm. You use a knife to stitch your clothes. What will you wear? Only tatters. See, that's what you're seeing in Los Angeles right now. Half the people are wearing tattered clothes, maybe they used a knife to stitch their jeans. Mm. <laughs> exactly, with holes in them, <laughs> yes <laughs> So if you use a knife to stitch, that's what will happen, all tatters. Right now human life is in tatters, mainly because of this. Instead of using a needle, you're using a knife. So intellect is a very good instrument of survival. If you want to survive on this planet, you need a sharp intellect. The sharper it is, the better you will survive. But that will not make life, 
that will not put everything together. Mm -hmm. Right now, because through intellectual process, people are trying to handle everything. With so much care, they're trying to do everything right, 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 and a blunder. The result is a blunder. Everything right, but the end result is a big blunder, because you're using a knife to do everything. Hmm. When… okay, here's a… here's a question for you. When you… <clears throat> when was the last time that you felt anger or resentment and actually expressed it? I was just thinking of getting angry with you just now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Bring it. I love that. See, <laughs> the thing is, Luis, I… Uh, I did not give this privilege to anybody, that somebody can make me happy, somebody can make me unhappy, somebody can make me angry, somebody can make me miserable. I have not given that privilege to anybody. Mm. It's not that I'm incapable of all these things, if I want, I can be all those things. Right. But I have not give the, given this privilege to anybody. They can't do something to me and make me angry, no. I have not given that privilege to anyone. Did you have… did you have that experience or give that privilege to someone when you were younger? Did you learn that at a certain point where you transitioned? Till… till I was twenty-three, twenty-four years of age, from the age of probably eleven, twelve, I was always twenty-four hours angry. Really? <laughs> Most… yes <laughs> Because I was… I was on this binge of what is justice and injustice. Huh. So once you start looking what is justice and injustice, just about everything in the world looks unjust. Everything makes small, you angry. Small, small thing. Yeah. Yeah. Everything… anything <laughs> unjust means it makes me angry. And everywhere I see, whether at home, in school, on the street, in the society, in the country, in the world, wherever I see, I think this is unjust, this is unjust, this is unjust. So much injustice, always angry. <laughs> right. I mean, I feel like there's a lot… there's a lot of people in, the, in America and in the world who a lot of things make them angry and there's a lot of injustice for people. So when… when did you shift? And how did you come to that realization that this no longer works for you in your life? See, it doesn't work for anybody. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Not just for me. <laughs> but for you personally, see, when did you realize? <laughs> see, the reason why people think anger is some kind of a virtue, because they say righteous anger, all mm. right? Right now, America is sheathing with anger, and they think it's righteous anger. This is simply because it takes some horrible thing to s stimulate them into action. There's not enough love in your heart to mm. stimulate yourself into action. Something has to poke you, you must get angry and then it propels you into action. So that kind of action sometimes will produce results, of course. But if you want genuine results which will be good for everybody, we must do it when everything is right. But when everything is little comfortable, Nobody does anything. When something horrible happens, then we will get angry and propel ourselves into action. Right now, this propelling yourself into action with anger, how long will you keep it up? Not, I you mean, cannot keep it up forever. Keep it up long. Yeah, you get tired. Yes. If you keep it up forever, you, you will destroy yourself and you will destroy everything around yourself. So, anger is become valuable because most people are so lethargic in their responses. Once in a way when they get angry, they feel empowered and seem to be doing right things once in a way. You must be doing those right things all your life, mm. then by the end of your life everything might not have changed, but you would have made a difference. That's the way the world works. Mm. So how… I, man… <laughs> So if people are lethargic and comfortable a lot of the times and they're unwilling to choose love and act with love to make a change, how do we get people to wake up when things are calmer so that they can act with love and get the change and the results they want? See, today, uh, this whole moment, what uh, you're seeing as inner engineering is a moment from religion to responsibility, in a way. Mm, mm. Essentially what I mean is, religion means people are thinking responsibility is somewhere up there. 
Where is that up, nobody knows, all right? You just have to believe where is that up. But now you are sitting in California, I am here in Tamil Nadu. If I look up, I am looking at… looking up in one direction. If you look up, you are looking up in another direction. So my up is different, your up is different. And by tomorrow morning again, my up will be yours, your up will be mine. <laughs> It'll be big confusion. The damn planet is spinning and it's round. Which way is up? <laughs> Does yeah. anybody know which way is up in this universe? Is it marked somewhere in the cosmos, <laughs> this side up? There is no such thing. So responsibility is up there. No, 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 it must come here. We must understand, if we want to live in a wonderful world, it's only us and us and us who can make this happen. No other force from anywhere is going to make this happen. Unless we realize on transform ourselves from religion to responsibility that it's here, what this whole thing has come up is, see because we have no explanation for creation. Before you and me came, so much creation has happened. Who did it? A simplistic, childish understanding of this is a big man must have done it. So he is somewhere up there, because you can't see him here, he must be up there. Now of course women are claiming, why not it be a woman? In India we sorted these problems out, there are… we have man gods, we have woman gods, we have snake god, we have cow god, we have elephant god, we have every kind, crawling ones, creeping ones, flying ones, because we foresaw all the future problems that may happen. <laughs> you don't know who will claim what tomorrow, so we said everything is God. So what I am saying is, our idea of God has essentially come because we have no explanation for creation. How did all this happen? Such a complex, mm -hmm. fantastic stuff. Who did it? Because we are human, we think it must be a big human being. Suppose you and me were buffaloes having conversation right now. We would definitely think God is a huge buffalo, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Nobody could argue with us about that. We would definitely say he's a huge buffalo because that would be our imagination. Right now, this is our imagination. It's fine if you are using it, to settle a few things, if you are using it as a way of a psychological process, fine. But solace is one thing, solutions for life is a different thing. Mm. So one first thing that we must decide is, those who are in extreme states of poverty, war, other kinds of misery imposed upon them, only for them you must give solace. Rest of us who have eaten our breakfast today morning or dinner, we should talk about solution, not solace. Solace is just a psychological process to settle something within you. But why? People who have eaten well, people who are healthy, people who have a life to live, why are they psychological problem? They should not have any psychological problem, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I know this will be very cruel for a lot of people, but they better get it because life is brief. If they don't get it now and they think being psychologically disturbed is normal, they will spend their life like this, it is not normal. To be healthy is normal, to be balanced is normal, to be joyful is normal. Look at yourself when you were five years of age. Were you m miserable or joyful? And if somebody had to make you take the joy out of you by poking you with something, otherwise joy wouldn't go, you would be bouncing all over the place, isn't it? Correct. Today somebody has to make you happy, somebody has to work hard to make you happy. So at that time somebody had to work hard to make you miserable. Today somebody has to make you work hard to make you happy. The whole equation has gotten reversed, what is it? What is it that happened to you? You just grew up. If you grew up, life should become better when you grow up, isn't it? If you're looking for more greatness in your life, make sure to check out this video right here. And also check out our free PDF, The Three Secrets to Unlock the Power of Your Mind to Help You Change Your Life. Download it right here. But the, the thing is, can you teach discipline? The answer is yes. How? But you have to have a willing participant.